Hello everyone. In this book review, I'm gonna do um, a review of a nice book. It's called Ending Aging by Habri the Gray, right here. And um, he, essentially what he does is he lays out various ways that we can literally end aging. So he talks about how aging is really bad for us and it's been shown in the lab that it actually can be postponed via various techniques. One of them was caloric restriction, so essentially eating less calories, which he mentioned in the book, it's actually an evolved response that's environmentally dependent and then can postpone aging, but the damage still accumulates. And so we need to do something, we need to repair the damage that has already been done. So he doesn't believe that caloric restriction has been, is gonna be useful for humans, although it has been shown in the lab to be useful for um, mice and for nematodes like C. elegans. Now he mentions that, mentions that aging is just as amenable to intervention as diseases, as it's what causes disease, like cancer, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, dementia, etc. So aging causes disease and therefore we should be treating it using interventions, using therapy. And he talks in a book, he mentions that there's actually a 50-50 chance of defeating aging in around 20 years, so in two decades, assuming that we're going to have increases in, te in technological advances and funds being provided, which can prevent people from dying at any age. So there's a 50-50 chance that he provides it in 20 years, assuming that the technology is going to keep on advancing and proper funding is going to be supplied. So essentially, he... he mentions that there are seven main areas that need to be fixed. And um, he calls them seven senescence categories. So his approach is called negligent senescence. And these seven are one, are chromosomal mutations that can lead to cancer, as well as epi mutations, so mutations of the epigenome. And lots of cancer research is being done on that. The second approach which is more what he's working on, are mitochondrial mutations, so involving free radical. And he mentions in the book that antioxidant enzymes can help us so much to deal with these mitochondrial mutations. So though, although they produce these free radicals, we may think that antioxidants can help in the mitochondria to eliminate them, but they actually can't. What he mentions is cleaning too much free radicals may be bad as they play a role in cell signaling and metabolism. So we need to have a certain amount of these free radicals. And he mentioned they also play a role in ATP production. So we want to sever the link between free radicals and oxidative stress. We want to copy the mitochondrial DNA, what he mentions in the book. And the best way to do that is to copy that mitochondrial DNA to the nucleus, where the damage can occur less frequently. Because in the mitochondria, we have the electron transfer chain. And you have all these electrons. It's like it's like it's 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 like a it's like a hot spot for these mutations to occur. So we want to translate that to the nucleus so that mutations can occur less frequently, and let the metabolism occur as it is. So the mitochondrial DNA is damaged, but not it doesn't enter a maladaptive state where it creeps to the rest of the body. Um, as what happens if you transport those mitochondrial proteins or the genes, the nucleus, it's going to be expressed and those proteins are going to go to the mitochondria within the same cell. So the mitochondria is still going to operate normally. So that's the fix for the mitochondrial damage, the second one. The third one is glycation. So essentially this involves um, um, reversing the protein cross-link you know, that glycolytic proteins can cause. The fourth one is extracellular junk caused by beta amyloid proteins. And this is actually what can lead to to Alzheimer's. There's a company in California called ELAN, E-L-A-N, that showed that it can be removed in mice through vaccination um, against, the, against the plaque, and then, then the immune cells can gobble it up. And by the way, for glycation for the previous one, Altian, named ALK711, um, made this protein, ALK711, can, can reverse the protein crosslinks that, that this process causes. The fifth way, is lipofusin, which is built up inside the cell. And the sixth one is cell senescence, and the seventh way is depletion of cells and stem cells. So the fifth one is build up inside the cells, which he came up with in Dresden, Germany, 1999, using enzymes from soil bacteria that can degrade this long living organic matter. In this case, this lipofusin, this inside the cell organic buildup. So there's this um, soil bacteria enzymes, this 
uh, microbe enzymes that can break it up. And they're used actually in environmental decontamination. So the intracellular junk could be fixed. The sixth way is cell senescence. And we have distinct markers in the inner cells that can, that can indicate whether cells are going to become senescent. And this, there's a person called Juni Campsini at Berkeley who is working on this right now. The seventh approach is depletion of cells and stem cells. And this can be um, tackled using many aspects, like rejuvenation cell therapy, which is a hot area right now. For example, you can grow adult stem cells. You can harvest embryonic stem cells in fertility clinics, or you can use nuclear transfer of old cells to younger cells via a woman egg and electricity. And this is already um, being done right now for disease and trauma. So there's a lot underway to try to, to allow us to replenish our stem cells. So essentially what he's saying is that we can repair the damage after it's laid down, but before it's out of control. So essentially gerontology works by trying to prevent the damage, but it says it's the theory is too complicated in prevention. You have to know so, so much. It's easier to just fix what's already been laid down. Whereas geriatrics tries to um, fix the, the, tries to prevent pathology when it's already too late, by trying to fix the damage when it's already too late. So what he's saying is that we want to do something called engineering, which is his approach, to fix the damage, to fix the accumulation that has been done before it's too late, but also we don't want to prevent it because it's too difficult. We want to simply remove what's already damaged, but before it's too late, before it's out of control. And so um, he gives all these seven senescence ways of doing it. So essentially, it's the best of both worlds between gerontology, prevention, and geriatrics, fixing, but when it's too late and out of control. So it's called it that engineering. So essentially, you want to fix that damage, um, right? That's, that's caused by um, faulty metabolic pathways. So the damage has already been laid. You want to fix it between, that dam between it's too late, before that damage turns into pathology or disease. Okay. Um, so essentially, yeah, these seven ways include um, um, fixing those seven things. Again, um, being able to fix the mutations that can lead to cancer. The second one is mit mitochondrial mutation, which is Aubrey de Grey's um, spot that he does a lot of research on through allot allotopic expression of 13 mitochondrial proteins, but expressing them in the nucleus instead. Um, fixing intracellular junk via transgenic um, microbial enzymes, as I mentioned, the soil bacteria, fixing extra cellular junk um, like, like beta amyloid plaque that can cause Alzheimer's through phagocytosis by immune cells, as I mentioned, work has been done, is, been done, is, is being done on that. Cross linking of cells due to glycation we can fix by something called age, A-G-E, breaking molecules, to break this cross-linking. Um, then there's something called cell loss, or you're losing cells or senescence and all that. So cell therapy, as I mentioned, embryonic stem cells, all that. And um, the last one, there's also something called, yeah, so cell loss, right, senescence, um, you're losing stem cells, all that can be fixed by cell, by cell therapy. And then... Um, the last thing is death-resistant cells. So these are cells that just don't want to do apoptosis. So you can fix that by, by expressing the suicide genes and by stimulating the immune system to kill those cells to prevent them from, from, um, from replicating or to prevent, to, um, to, to prevent these cells from causing havoc in the body because they don't die, so to prevent them from replicating and causing more and more. And so, um, yeah, and so again, there's these seven ways. By the way, for the first one that I mentioned, mutations causing cancer, um, the way to fix that is by causing a downregulation in an enzyme called telomerase, or um, deleting the ALT gene and, and, and reseeding them with stem cells. So essentially, if we downregulate telomerase, we're going to stop, um, we're going we're gonna to kill the cells because the telomeres are going to get too short. So that's an approach to treat cancer caused by chromosomal mutations. So there are these seven big ways, seven kind of themes that 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 he that the senescence is gonna fix, including chromosomal mutations, mitochondrial mutations, intracellular junk, extracellular junk, glycations, as well as cell loss, um, as well as um, um, cell loss and senescence, um, reduction in stem cells, as well as cells that are resistant to death or apoptosis. So I'm going to 
now start with, I finished part one and I'm going to look at each of those seven areas. And as I mentioned, the work is already done in most of those areas, if not all. And so this is actually a very interesting area, hot topic of our decade. And it's just a matter of enough funding being provided to, um, to actually being able to consolidate all of this and actually um, provide the technology that, that's needed. Um, and so he admits in the book there's maybe more than those seven, but what he says is that it's going to buy us enough time, maybe two or three decades, a couple of decades, bef before those other technologies are going to come to fix the other issues that, that there may be. So definitely, even if there's more, these are, this will buy us time. And, and there's this concept called longevity escape velocity. So even if we can do it step by step, kind of buying cashiers and the new technologies and come, et cetera, we can put that potentially live indefinitely. And this is actually pretty, pretty cool. So I'm, I'm really glad I'm, I'm reading this up with a great book. My next one is going to be Why We Age and We Don't Have To by David Sinclair, where he gives actually a bit more practical stuff into things we can do on a daily basis. I think he, he talks about something called the information theory of aging. So I can't wait to read that book too. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. By the way, I'm wearing my um, blue light blocking glasses during night to help me sleep. So if you guys see me with those, I'm probably making an, a video in the evening and I apologize um, if, um, if I look a bit funky or weird. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and until next time, peace.